Now today we're going to solve a question on limits. The question is limit x is tending towards 0 sine of x minus x square minus times of fractional part of x multiplied by fractional part of minus of x. Similarly, some variation is given in denominator with some fractional part of x here. Now, first of all, I'm going to check the indeterminate form. As you can see, if you put 0, it is 0 by 0 form here. Now, whenever fractional part is present and whenever GIF is present, greatest integer function, we always check left hand limit and right hand limit because this gives you behavioral changes of the function. Okay, so first thing I'm going to check is right hand limit that is x is tending towards 0 positive. So I'm going to calculate this limit x is tending towards 0 positive. Now the second hurdle you'll see in the problem is you can tackle fractional part of x, but it will be very difficult to tackle fractional part of minus of x. So in today's lecture, I'm going to show you how to tackle fractional part of minus of x whenever you see in this in future. So first of all, I need the graph of fractional part of x. So for the graph of fractional part of x, I think easily you can make here, the graph of fractional part of x will be like this, for 0 positive. And at exactly 1, it get discontinuous. And this branch is x, I can easily say. Now, if I want one more branch, let's say if like this. At 0, it is open here and for minus 1. So this branch I want exactly. In order to get this branch, I can write x is equal to gif of x plus fractional part of x. Now, when x is varying from minus 1 to 0, gif is a fixed value that is minus 1. So we'll get x plus 1 as this branch. Whenever x, is belong, x belongs to minus 1 to 0 here. So this branch is x plus 1. Similarly, the next branch will be x minus 1 here. And similarly, you can get the next branches that we don't need as of now. Now I'm going to show you how to tackle with fractional part of minus of x. So I'm going to take the help of fractional part of x. That is, I'm going to write fractional part of x plus here fractional part of minus of x. And you have to remember this. Okay. So for, for example, let's say when x is integer, there are two cases when x is integer. So integer, fractional part of integer is 0 and fractional part of minus integer is also 0. And for x does not belong to integer, this is important. You can check by putting any value here. Let's say 1.5. When you put 1.5, this will give you 1, the sum of these two. Now with the help of this, I can calculate fractional part of minus x always. <coughs> and this will be always true for non-integer value, it will be always 1. You can check for any value. So here I have limit x is tending towards 0 positive, sine of x minus x square as it is. Now when x belongs to 0 positive here, when I'm taking 0 positive here, I think for fraction part of x, it will be equal to x only because this is the branch which we are talking about right now. And next is fraction part of minus of x and this is very important. So when x is from 0 to 0 positive, as x is tending towards 0 positive, I think a uh, fraction part of minus of x I have to select the second branch because non-integer points. So it will be equal to 1 minus fractional part of x here. So I'm going to write this as 1 minus x here as fractional part of minus of x. Divide by, this will be x cos of x minus x square and then same as it is. Now let's simplify this. So here I think minus of minus of x will give you plus x square and plus x square plus x square will cancel out in numerator and denominator. So I'll get this as limit x is tending towards 0 positive. Sine of x remaining is minus x, I think. Whole divide by here, I'll get this as uh, cos of x, x cos of x minus x here. So I'm taking x outside and I'm writing here 1 upon cos of x minus 1 here. Now, this is a pretty standard limit 1 minus cos theta upon theta square as theta tending towards 0. So I'm going to multiply and divide by here by x square here. And here I'm multiplying by x square, it will become x cube. Now this is a very pretty standard limit here, that is minus half. It will be minus half. So minus half will go in numerator, it will become 2. So this limit is sorted. This limit is limit x is tending towards 0 positive. This is minus 2. Now in order to calculate this, this 0 by 0 form, I can use either lopital or I can use expansion here. So I'm using expansion of sine of x, that is x minus x cube divide by 3 factorial and so on minus x here whole divide by x cube so if I calculate this x and minus x will cancel out here x cube and x cube will cancel out rest of the term will be 0 and I'll get minus 1 by 3 factorial that is equal to minus 1 by 2 into minus 1 by 6 and that will be equal to 1 by 3 so our right hand limit RHL is equal to 
1 by 3. Now I'm going to check LHL is equal to this. Whether if LHL is equal to this, then the limit will be equal to 1 by 3. Otherwise, the limit does not exist. So let's check. Now let's try for left hand limit. That is limit x is standing towards 0 negative here. Now when x is approaching 0 negative, I think numerator is sin of x minus x square. Now I have to think about fractional part of x as well as fractional part of minus of x. Now let's say when x is approaching 0 negative, I think in this region, so fractional part of x will be equal to, I think it is equal to x plus 1. We have to take this branch. So this will be x plus 1. Now we have to calculate fractional part of minus of x. So fractional part of minus of x will be equal to, I'm going to take when x is non-integer, I'm going to take 1 minus times fractional part of x. So fractional part of x for x 0 negative, I think it is x plus 1. So I think it is equal to minus of x here. I'm going to substitute here minus of x in place of fractional part of minus of x here. Similarly, x cos of x minus x square minus x plus 1 as it is and minus of x here. Now, next step is limit x standing towards 0 negative. I'm going to simplify this expression. I think x square and x square here will cancel out because this is x minus x into minus x is plus x square and that will cancel out with this minus x square. Remaining is here is sine of x. Uh, remaining is, uh, I think, plus x here. Whole divided by your x cos of x and then plus of x is remaining here. Now, I think I can take x common here. I can write this as sine of x by x plus x by x is, I think, 1 and divide by here we will get cos of x plus 1. Now, I don't think any indeterminate form is remaining here. I directly can I can substitute here sine of x by x x is x is tending towards 0 negative is 1 so this is 1 plus 1 this is 2 divided by this is denominator is cos of 0 plus 1 I think 2 so 2 by 2 will be equal to 1 here so left hand limit is equal to 1 now right hand limit we got this as 1 by 3 and right hand limit we have calculated previously it was 1 by 3 and left hand limit we got 1 so LHL is not equal to RHL our answer is limit does not exist this is our final answer and that'll be all.